Hey Bass Fanatics, Den Herring here. Welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365. It's September 28th today, it's a Friday, and I'm on Lake Wall and Paw Pack. I haven't been here since early August. I have no idea what's going on. The water's quite green, but that happens this time of year. Most of that seems to be on the surface. It's clear enough to catch fish. So it's down the way it normally is this time of year. They're drawing it down. Um, I'm gonna fish a bunch of different places. I'm gonna focus first on the back of some coves, thinking that some of the fish have moved in here, but I have no idea. So we're just gonna have to play it by ear. My plan is to fish and cover water fairly quickly, doing a number of different things. I'll go over those techniques with you as I do them. And uh, what I'm really trying to do is just figure out what the fish are doing, where they are, and how to catch a few. So follow along with me and we'll see how we do. Tom back here, could be a topwater bite later on. temperature on my truck said 58 degrees but I'm sitting out here sweating. I'm not sure why. It's uh, humid for one. So we'll pull that off for now. If I need it again later, I'm sure I will. I'll put it back on. Starting off shallow. If I have to go deeper, I will. Probably didn't get to see it. Ah, had my crankbait in his mouth and uh, I think it was a large mouth. He just jumped off. That's a good sign. You wanted it? Good. There's rock in here, but there's also milfoil. And I was just trying to weave the crankbait through the milfoil. And he ate it. Thicker milk foil down here. I have a different solution for that. Take the rod. going to be a good day folks. <laughs> First cast with the beaver, got a large mouth. <laughs> Not a bad one either. <laughs> that did take long. Now see what I did there was, you know, I was cranking in here, but then the milfoil started getting thicker. And I think I had a better solution for the thicker milfoil. And that was this beaver. So I just put it on and immediately caught that large mouth. Now I'm getting into the milfoil. I don't want to scare them. So I'm going to back out and I'm going to pitch this beaver in uh, the milfoil for a while because that was my first cast and he was all over it, which is a very good sign. Let's see what happens here now. If I can't get a few more on the beaver. There's more milfoil up ahead. I think these large mouths are just sitting in here. I've got to put the bags up ahead, so we'll crank until we, we'll crank until we get to a thicker bed. And just repeat. Crankbait until we get to a thicker milfoil bag. A well, large mouth back in this cove. We might be able to repeat that in some other coves. We'll see. We might want to up the size of our crankbait too. Focus on bigger fish. I know there's some coves with milfoil like this that are not far from here. This is just milfoil here. We get some thick beds here. So right away, I'll go back to the beaver. 
start pitching these thicker bags. See what we can do. Right now on this beaver, I don't even have any leader. I'm just fishing straight braid with this. Oh, it's deep down here. Good, good depth for these leaves. I'm fishing straight braid. And uh, so when you fish heavier cover like these leaves, that's good. But this water is so darn green right now. That helps me too. Uh, I don't think they notice the line when you're throwing it among these, these milfoil patches. <coughs> but it helps that the water's a little up color. I mean, usually under normal circumstances, this lake is very clear. But it's not this time of year. It gets this uh, algae blue, and the water gets really green. And so you just take advantage of that. You gotta, you gotta take what the lake gives you. You, you adapt to what the lake is giving you, and you catch fish that way. Large mouth. <laughs> I'll take these all day long. They're not giants, but they're fun to catch. <laughs> hey, look at that guy. <laughs> Never felt him hit. The line just got heavy. This is a pattern. We're already on a pattern here. These large mouths have established themselves inside this milk oil. And, uh, you know, we got three hooked up already. We got two to the boat. So this is a, it's a good thing because we're on it. We know what to do about it. We know how to catch these guys. must have been a pickerel. That one broke my line. Straight braid too. Uh, that's unfortunate. That was a heavy fish, whatever it was. I'm going to have to set myself up out here and uh, this is the only soft plastics rod I bought. I brought. I mean I did bring a uh, jig with a Kitek on it, but I think in these cases where these weeds are, this is the thing to be thrown. So I'm going to take some time out and set up another one because I do think it's important to take the time to, to use a marker to blacken your line if you're using straight braid the way I am. And so that's what I'm doing here before I put this beaver on. I just want to mark up my line a little bit so that uh, makes it harder for the fish to see it, to see my line. So what I've done was I put a little notch in the tip of the marker and my line just fits right in it. A couple of passes and it's good to go. Now I gotta find a beaver. Alright. Alright, we're all beaved up and ready to go. I have to wait to get into some more weeds. We'll throw the crankbait until we do. It's a good one-two combination right now, I believe. I'm going to 
to get a little more organized so I'm not getting all tangled here. Make the bottom. Make the crank. <laughs> Later I'll get a bass doing that. Crankbait runs really crazy. It hunts like mad. Here's one. Not sure what it is. It's little. Another largemouth. Just jumped them through the hooks again. So they're jumping wildly out here. This place is loaded with large mouths. Bellies on. side of the face. <laughs> that was luck. He definitely tried to eat it though. <laughs> That's a good one there, fat one. <laughs> They're eating everything I throw at them. That was on the uh, on the Kitek. I just realized my hook needs some sharpening. I find this interesting. We came one cove over from where we were. We're just on the other side of this long point. In a different cove with a lot of milfoil. Not one bite in this milfoil. But there's some key differences. Number one, there's no rocks back in this cove. It's a muddy bottom. And I think they want that harder rocky bottom. Number two, in this milfoil was a bunch of snot. A bunch of the filamous algae. I don't think they like that either. So we're going to go to another cove that's rockier, but I think we'll have milfoil in it and see if we can't repeat what we did when we started. Alright. Let's see how we do. <laughs> that fish hit at least eight times before I finally hooked him. <laughs> That's a small one. I was using a big bait. Oh, he's trying to jump. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy, but I got him. He just could not get the hook in his mouth, but he finally did. This is why I'm using a bigger bait. Bigger bait, bigger fish, beautiful small mouth. Came here, where's a hump? And I got this guy. Let's put him back. 
beautiful fish. There he goes. That fish really wanted the bait. He couldn't get a fish, he couldn't get it in his mouth right away. <laughs> but he finally got it. Crazy how bad that fish wanted it. Crazy. So here are the baits that caught fish while I was at Lake Wall and Paw Pack. This first one is a crankbait that I got from Jan's Netcraft. I believe it's called a PC200. And I don't think it's available anymore. You don't find it in their catalog. And when I called them, they told me that they no longer sell it and that they discontinued it. And that's unfortunate because uh, this thing is a great crankbait. I was at a tackle show, a tackle swap some years ago, and somebody said, hey, have you ever used these PC200s? They're, you know, you can get five of them for a couple of bucks, real cheap, and you just put your own hooks on them. And I said, no, I don't know anything about them. And he said, they, they really seem to catch fish, especially smallmouth. So I thought, well, what the heck, for a couple of bucks, I'll, I'll buy a few from Jans and see how they work. Well, I did that, and I, and I took the, the, this exact color. This is an alewife pattern to uh, Wall and Paul Pack several Octobers ago and I caught several nice small mouths on it just throwing it against the bank and reeling it back and ever since then I was hooked this crankbait catches fish it's unfortunately you can't get it anymore I did lose one when I was at Paul Pack that day I got it hung on a rock and I only had eight pound test on and it, and it broke with me trying to get it back this is uh, another one I have this one and about four others and then of different colors and then uh, no more. So um, I'm hoping one day that they reintroduce it because somebody somewhere has the mold for this thing and it's just a matter of making some more. Another bait that uh, was responsible for catching the large mouths was the Sweet Beaver. This is the, uh, the 4.25 inch Sweet Beaver. I was using a one half ounce tungsten weight on the front of it. And that was to get that fast fall for a reaction strike and a 3 aught extra wide gap Gamagatsu hook. And I'll put links to these items in the description of the video. And then lastly, we caught that nice smallmouth on a, on a Kitek Swing Impact Fat. This has a 3 quarter ounce Matt Allen swim bait head on it. And uh, so I was just throwing this thing out, letting it fall really fast to the bottom and then retrieving it at a moderate pace back to the boat and that's when that smallmouth was just going crazy over it. He kept hitting the tail and, and not getting the whole bait in his mouth and then finally I decided I won't set the hook this time or even try. I'll just keep reeling until the rod loads up and gets heavy. Oftentimes that's how the smallmouths hit this bait and that finally happened where it loaded up and then I just pulled back and I caught the fish. So it was a nice smallmouth and it was a pleasurable day out on Lake Wall and Paul Pack. You know, it's funny, I really thought we were on a pattern there when it came to those largemouth bass that I thought would be repeatable in the next couple of coves down lake from where I was. Very similar water. I, I found a couple other coves that did have that hard rocky bottom. They did have the milfoil, even more of it, quite a bit more of it. They didn't have that snot grass in it, and yet I could not catch a largemouth in those other coves. So that just tells me that there was something about that first cove that we started in that those bass wanted to be in. I really think that if I would have went back to that original cove and started throwing the crank and the, and the beaver again a second time through there, that I would have caught more largemouths because there was just a big school of them in there. It became obvious to me as I was fishing around and through it. But they were not in the other coves. And uh, that might be because of where I was. There may have been a little more current in that section. Difficult to say. I'll be thinking about that for quite some time to see if I can figure it out. Well, if you like that video, please hit that like button. It's important to me. It tells me that I'm giving the right content. So make sure you do that if you did like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel. You really need to subscribe to the channel if you want to find more content like that. And uh, hit that bell. Hit that indication, that bell indication. That'll give you a notification of when I put out another video. And in fact, I'll be putting out another video pretty soon. I go back to Lake Wall and Paul Pack with my son. We went camping overnight. We camped overnight Saturday and we fished during the day on Saturday. There was a tournament going on during the time, actually two tournaments going on during the time we fished. But uh, we were able to catch some fish of our own. We weren't fishing in the tournaments. We didn't even know much about them at the time. But it was interesting too because again the conditions change. We tried that spot for the large mouse and we came up empty. So we had to adapt and go elsewhere. and. 
So you'll have to watch the video to see how we did. That'll be coming out within the next week. Don't forget to share the videos with your friends. Let them know that we're out there so that they can subscribe too. I'm Den Herring. My channel is FishDen365. We're certified, bassified, and may God bless your fishing endeavors.